Professor George Albert Omore Magoha was born some 52 years ago in Kisumu East, the current hospital at Kisumu East, and went to primary school in, uh, in Game and Nairobi. Uh, my primary school was at Dr. Livingstone, after which I joined Starey Boys Center, where I was trained in to be what I am today. After Starey Boys Center, I went to Strathmore College, and from Strathmore College, I was uh, taken then by the government through a scholarship to the University of Lagos, originally University of Zambia, but there were issues there, so I went to University of Lagos, where I trained as a physician, and continued from there to train as a surgeon and urologist. From there, I also went to the, uh, the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, the Royal Postgraduate Medical School in London at Hammersmith, and much later in life, to the Stanford uh, University Graduate School of Business. Uh, my trajectory from the medical perspective has been extremely eventful because I started teaching in 1979 at uh, the University of Lagos and was then requested to, to come to Kenya in 1987 when the late Professor Wari died. The government was looking for Kenyans up abroad and I was approached and came. At that time, I had to leave uh, a well-earning salary of over 100,000 shillings to come and start earning 6,000 shillings because I thought I had something to offer. On coming to Kenya, uh, I took a job which was basically below what I was expected to do. I started on as a lecturer, but within a year I went on to be a senior lecturer and passed very quickly through the ranks from 1988 to the year 2000 when I became a full professor of urological surgery. Uh, so the vertical, um, the vertical uh, trajectory in 1999, I was tried as a chairman of academic department of surgery as an acting chairman, then later confirmed. And since I'm very firm, even though I was approached to be a dean, I said I was not going to be a dean because I was not going to campaign to anybody. But the staff told me, no, that's precisely why we want you to become the dean. So I became the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine in the year 2000 and uh, when I went to the Dean's office it looked like a pigsty, so that's where it started. I uh, basically went to the VC and told him, well, I cannot sit in this uh, office because I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine. And he said, well, my son, there's no money. I told him, but there's a lot of money out there. You just need to go and, and, and look for it. And he said, go and try. And two weeks later, I was back with 10 million shillings from my Korean colleagues. And then for the first time, I got a bit annoyed with my very good friend and mentor, Professor Kichaga. He said, but you can't build your office until you build that of the principal. So I said, but why didn't you tell me before? He said, no, I did tell you before because I was sure you were not going to get the money. So it took me another six weeks to convince my colleagues there and I started, I got another 20 million shillings, so together about 30 million. We rebuilt the dean's office, the principal's office, and all the other facilities that go with them. Now, I didn't know that that is what was going to propel me into uh, uh, the administration of the university, because a year later, Gijaga then comes and tells me, no, Professor, you come, go to the next office as I consult. I passed senior deans who had been there before, and I was principal of the college for one year, again, before I was told, now come to the main campus, where I was appointed a deputy vice chancellor in charge of administration and finance in the year 2002. And for those of you who are in Nairobi then, I asked the permission of the vice chancellor and transformed the parking space and everything else there. And at that time, I was being told, why are you beautifying the outside? But that came to pass. When it came to 2004, and we had a new chancellor who insisted that uh, we had to look for a vice chancellor from outside, I personally did not see anything wrong with Professor Kemba. So I told Professor Kemba, I don't think I was going to apply. Because as a loyal servant, as I was trained at Starry Boys Center, you get satisfied with what you have. Kemba told me, no, but uh, Professor, you should also just apply. You never know.
So there was an international advert through uh, the international press, and we were shortlisted. And I was the first public vice chancellor to be appointed through a competitive process. And I was given then performance targets by Joseph Baragio and Jui, with whom I didn't work very well at the beginning. But when I understood what he was after, and we started working together, the university went to heaven where I left it. Because he then brought the private sector influence in our public universities. I was a, a man of the cloth, but he brought the business concept. In fact, I now regret he had told me to go to Stanford to study business much earlier. And I said, no, I'm a professor. What do you think I'm going to learn there? But eventually when I went to the University of Stanford and came back, the result is that tower, the University of Nairobi towers that you see there. We did not get money from the bank and the government did not loan us. It was just pure, prudent financial management. And it was done through a process where at, at one time we were working 24 hours. At Starhead Voice Center, Mr. Speaker, sir, I was trained never to trust anybody. But that even when you delegate, you never delegate completely. Because if you delegate completely, then you lose control. So even as a team leader, well, Honorable Sankok is nodding because he knows we have a history with him. <laughs> so the I dare say that I have looked like I succeeded where I'm going, but even when you give me a report and say, well, this is what I have done, I will tell you thank you very much. Before I sign it, I will go back and check. So there's a long list of what I have done. I don't want to go through them. When I took over as vice chancellor, the university had many stalled projects. They, are, they were completed. Perhaps the most important thing I did for Kenya was when I went to Canada to negotiate, to compete for money. It wasn't a loan. We were competing for money with Canadian syndicates of universities and health institutions. And I won, the team that I led won 241 million Canadian dollars. And the result of that can be measured at Kenyatta National Hospital through the level three laboratory that is there, which is dealing with research on uh, uh, fevers that uh, like Lassa fever and so on and so forth. Uh, my major weakness, Mr. Speaker, sir, is that I start from the end. You, I start from the goal that I want to achieve and work backwards and make sure that it is achieved. Because throughout my short period in public service, I have found out that processes are so good, the processes are always very good. When you want to measure what you have achieved with that process, there is nothing to measure. So as I come before you, I know, Mr. Speaker, sir, that uh, if I don't have you as part of the team, the larger team, then I shall not deliver. I believe, as I conclude, that in order to deliver, you must empower whoever is working for you or all the people that you are working with. And if you are, by the grace of God, taken to lead them, you must lead from the front and from the back, but by example. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.